Welcome back to White Collar Woker. So today I'm going to be talking about sales again and the three best books for salespeople. Now a little bit about me, why, why am I telling you this? I've been in sales nine years now. I started off in a boiler room sales environment, names, phone numbers, pick up the phone, smashing the phone, you know, doing hundreds of calls a day, hours and hours. Um, a day on the phone trying to uh, trying to persuade people uh, to take advertising products. So I started out with media sales and then over the years I progressed uh, to bigger, better companies, bigger, better media products. I ended up being an account manager at a FTSE, FTSE 20 company um, and nowadays I'm a, I'm a sales manager uh, looking after a team of people uh, and I've sold anything from, you know, a media product worth a few hundred pounds, um, you know, sort of advert in a magazine, so to speak, up to hundreds of thousands uh, and in the end millions of pounds worth of uh, media products, which can be, you know, advertising, um, webinars, online analytics, reports. Um, it can also be sponsorship at big events. Um, you know, these are trade events, but think of it like, um, sponsorship at your favorite football or rugby or sporting or music event it's always sponsored by someone isn't it that's me that's selling it to those big companies so that's a bit of my background and over the years i've done hours and hours of sales training so much sales training so much absolute guff but that can go into a different video sales training is a is a bit of an odd profession and i've read and i've practiced and i've done um, you know, so much work with other people, you know, a role play, so to speak. These are the three best books, in my opinion, on sales. So let's go into number one, and I'll try and figure out how to put timestamps into this. Number one, Selling to Win by Richard Denny. I've written it down here just to not get it wrong. So Selling to Win is a great book. It's very small. You could probably read it in a day. You could probably read it in an afternoon even. It's only about 150, 160 pages long. It's mainly about the mindset of a salesperson. What are the characteristics? What are the actions? What's the process? And what's the mindset that salespeople need if they want to um, exceed at their job? And that's the reason why sales is uh, different to other professions. You know, if, if you are, I don't know, working an admin, if you're a secretary, not to say anything wrong about those jobs, but if you're a job, you're just paid a salary, there's no bonus or commission. Um, it almost, you, you put in the minimum amount of effort, you do nine to five and then you go home. Sales are different. Sales is performance based. And if you get the right contract and if you get the right job, you get the right mindset, which is what this book is about. And if you get the right process and the right actions and you execute correctly, you can make a lot of money. Um, you know, I was at a dinner party with a, with a couple of friends. I was out in the pub as well. And, 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 you know, salary and how much you get paid got brought up. You know, I, was, I, I had a couple of drinks at that point. I told people what I earned and I think people were quite taken aback. And I, I'm not even, I, I don't think I'm even doing that well. I live in London where there are bankers that are earning, you know, multiple millions of pounds a month in their paycheck. And I, I come up with, to these people. You know, I'm sometimes chatting to them at, at bars and stuff, and I don't even think I'm that successful. But I came from a very small town, and, and that's the point of why sales is, is such a good career, if you're thinking about it. The second book, I really, really, I'd almost recommend the first one. The first one is more about mindset, so it's good for beginners. But if you're in sales, or if you um, want to get a bit more advanced, Spin Selling by Neil Rackman is a fantastic book. Now, a lot of sales trainers and a lot of sort of uh, salespeople actually don't like this book. It's a bit of a controversial one because it's not to get too technical, but it's about looking at what's the value gap. So let's say you have a business and you use a accountant software. Let's say you use QuickBooks. Uh, a lot of the time they're going to have pain points and problems with that particular software. Spin selling is about how do you get it, almost inception, how do you incept in the client's brain and get them to understand there's a gap between the, the way you're doing it, either the product or the systems you're news, using now, and how good you could be with my product, how good you could be doing it a new system, a new way. 
How do you make the client see, oh my God, we're losing out here or or let them see, oh my God, wow, we could be doing so much better here. That's the, the, the idea behind spin selling. It's called extending the value gap. Now, another really good point about spin selling is it looks into the how someone makes a decision on a transaction. Like, let's say you're going into a shop and you're looking at spending, uh, let's say you want to buy some gum. You, you, you know, you're going to see your girlfriend or you're going to an bus important business meeting, you need some gum. You're not going to stand there and you don't need a salesperson to consult with you the difference between that brand and that brand and the 10p extra. Because it's such a small transaction and because it's such a small purchase, it's a transactionary process. So if you're a salesperson and you know, you're know um, you on the shop floor and you've got a, a, a very small value item that you're trying to sell, it's very different from when you're trying to sell a product that's 300 grand. Very different sales process. And that's what spin selling goes into as well as extending the value gap. So that's a brilliant book for salespeople about the technical side of how to extend that value gap. And then also trying to place yourself in the client's mind. Is this a product that they need hours and hours of consultation into going into the importance of this characteristic or that characteristic? Or does the client just want to go, ah, you're cheaper than the competition, let's buy you. You have to judge if you're a salesperson in that role or not. The third and final book is influenced by, let me get this right, Robert Chial... <laughs> Cialdini. Robert Cialdini. Now, the reason this book is good is because it goes into the science of persuasion. And actually, that's a subtitle to the book, Influence the Science of, of Persuasion. And that essentially is what sales is about. How do you persuade people? How do you become a character who people are happy to consult with, happy to be approached by? You know, they don't feel pressured by you. They don't feel like you're going to be a pushy salesperson. Uh, and ultimately, how do you get people to trust you? That is ultimately how you get someone to spend 300, 400, 500 grand with you. They have to trust you deeply because their job is on the line often. I've had clients that spent their entire marketing budget with me because they trusted me. And ultimately, that was good for them. I, I never believe you should sell a product that is a scam or you should never sell a product that's not going to deliver. And ultimately, I did deliver on my promises. That book is about the different tactics of how to persuade people. There's one really interesting example of the Hare Krishna religion. I'm not sure if anyone knows those those guys, but I, I used to see them in, in, in the high street where they give you a free item. They either give you a free book or a free flower. Now, why do they do that? In fact, a lot of companies do this where they give you a free demo or they give you a free access to a newsletter. They give something for free. Why is that such a powerful way of persuading someone? The reason is, is because we have an innate feeling of having to reciprocate. If someone gives us something for free, there is something in a lot of people, not me, I'm, I'm a bit dead inside, but there's a, that feeling inside of people to go, if someone has given me something, I need to reciprocate in some way. So if you're trying to sell something, um, giving a free trial or giving an olive branch it doesn't necessarily need to be a free trial. It can be a value added product to go, hey, just to sweeten the deal, let me add in this for you. Or some salespeople, depending on where you are in that transaction or consultative sales cycle, they go, you know what, we'll give you 10% off this time and then down the line we'll have another chat about another product. So those that, that book goes into the meta. The, the second book, uh, Spin Selling, is more about technique, technical uh, ways in order to talk to clients and the first one is about is about mindset of the individual salespeople. so hope you enjoyed that feel free to like and subscribe this is a new channel i'm trying to figure things out we've got this whole new setup let me know what you want to see uh, do you want to talk about you know manosphere red pill stuff or do you want to talk about sales stuff let me know and i'll uh, see you guys later